Hi and welcome back here for the CPL Finals UK Leg 3 Millennium Series here in Basildon. Uh, it's the Campaign Cup and we have a different final than we've seen in the first two legs. We've got Edmonton Impact and Polar Bears Taco Cell. Yes! I'm Booyah. Shelley Farmer and I'm up here with... Nick T. Sloyak. <laughs> Hi. 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 <laughs> Hi. So I'm really excited to be here. Hi. <laughs> so this... Uh, this match is going to be sponsored by Paintball Garage, as you can see behind us. Thank you, Paintball Garage. They're a garage full of paintball stuff, and they'll fix it. They're the tech it's services broken. and repair center for you, so if you want anything fixed uh, paintball-wise, then please go on the search engine and uh, look them up, Paintball Garage. Uh, they'll be sponsoring this match here, the CPL Finals. Polar Bears versus... Uh, Shelly, we got to pick. Who are you, who you rooting for? Don't let me do that. All right, then don't do it. Yeah, I'm going to go, I'll, as I'm European, I'll go for um I'm going to go bears. for the Americans. Yeah, I'll go for the pe polar bears. As, yeah. Fourth they of July got, weekend, I'm, I'm yeah, blessing yeah. all the American players. And there they are on your screens. They obviously have guests, Ryan Greenspan, Oliver Lang. Oliver Lang, number two, playing back center, shooting Dorito's side. Ryan big Greenspan going Dorito's side. Oh, Big kill off the break, two kills. Close off the break for the Polar Bears. Ryan Greenspan, though, getting shot. Great fill into the snake by the Polar Oh! Does wow. Rainey Stanza get him? He doesn't. The ref's going to come in and check him out. Yeah, Rainey Stanza did shoot him. Oh, and they do get him. Oh, yes. Wow. So he's lucky it wasn't a penalty. Very lucky. It's, it's quite clear that he's been shot because he's on his neck underneath his mask. Oh, wow. That's where he was hit? Yes. I'll oh, give him a penalty. Yeah. What is he doing? It's quite obvious, that one. So... Madness off the break here as two <laughs> Edmonton Impact players get shot, but a really quick counterpunch by Rainey Stanzik, who just gets clipped in the head by looking inside from the Dorito 2 of Polar Bears. Yeah, it's just Justin Rabikoff left remaining now for Dorito 1. Oh. Edmonton Impact. Okay, my bad. So I missed another Impact player walking off, so Justin Rabikoff, the lone soldier holding it down, three on one. Uh, not going to be good, as I think Oliver Lang has picked up on that and is directing his player in front of him to go down the field to try and take out... Uh, Justin Rabikoff. So there you have a good shot of the Polar Bears players on the right side of your screen. Yeah, Justin Rabikoff doing a good job to hold them off at this time. You know, I think there's, is there two? There are two. There are two Edmonton Impact wow. players. Wow. Oh, there are there's two. There's Josh yes, Ahmed yes. in that little M. Sorry, folks, we couldn't see him from up here. Yeah, yeah, Josh Ahmed and... Um, wow, one for Rabikoff. one now being pulled on the Polar Bears, and oh, they are all going to get shot. Oh, Oliver Lang gets the penalty. Oliver Lang goes to make that move down the highway, and Josh Ahmet gets the word from his coach that he's coming, pops over the top, and shoots Oliver. Looks like Oliver took a couple extra steps and drew I that think, penalty. I think Polar Bears now will get a, have to start the next point with four points. No! Four players. Four let's, see, let's see what I have to say. Um, I mean, Rabikov now has uh, just hit the buzzer, and the point will go to Edmonton Impact. But it was in, it was in Polar Bears' favor. They it just was. threw it away. Um, but the... Uh, it'd be interesting to see what Jabba, the head ref, has to say as to what happened at the end there for Polar Bears, if he's going to let us know. If, if we don't hear from him, then the um, then there'll be no penalties and they'll start with five as normal. Well, so what we'll do now is we'll go to the pits for an in, uh, interview with Maurice and Polar Bears. So I'm in there with the pits with uh, Dave Baines, and Dave is trying to shout at his players, telling them, we've run over this game plan, we know what to do, uh, stop uh, over pushing it, and stop making stupid mistakes. So Dave was very happy to getting that two for one and getting that point. Uh, probably the Polo Bears won't be, but let's say uh, Dave is concentrated now on the game, so I'll leave him be, and I'm neck right next to him, and he's giving them the right positions to play. So back to the tower. Thank you, Maurice. Uh, you know, I don't know if I'd say I would like to hear back from Java if it was a two for one, because I saw the second Polar Bears player looked like he was hit and walking off, and they yeah. went after the back center player for Polar Bears. Now, I would think if it was a two for one and there was no buy to pull, wouldn't that be an instant point for, yeah, instant for impact? Point, yes. Yeah, because they, they didn't do that. They didn't. One for one penalty on the Polar Bears. Okay. Not a two for one, only a one for one penalty. Thank you, Java, for the call. <laughs> <laughs> so Java setting it straight, one for one on the Polar Bears. So one player was pulled, the other player uh, out of the three was eliminated as Oliver Lang drew that penalty. So I'm thinking they're starting with five. Yeah, so There's that's, it, it, and then in that case, ja uh, Justin Rabikoff played an outstanding point then for his team. He did, and so did, so did Josh Ahmet, who, I mean, 
Yeah. We didn't even know it was there no, for a no, while. We thought it was just Justin. I was like, man, how is Justin doing this? I think he was wearing some kind of Harry Potter cloak at that point because we did not see him on the field. Oh, well, can you tell us all about Harry Potter? <laughs> Harry Potter. <laughs> I don't need to tell you about them. Everyone's seen the films. That's the films you put on when you're unwell. <laughs> yeah, so we're picking up some interference from Maurice. He's chatting away on the sideline, trying to give us some, some breaking news. Yeah, it's uh, very distracting. Emerson <laughs> Impact on your screens. They're on the left. Yeah, Edmonton Impact on the left. You saw their breakout. I like the heads-up play by Zach Yakimak to get out here on the snake side, shooting heads up. He's now the widest body on the side. Uh, good breakout for Polar Bears as they get out to that Dorito 1, doubling up the back center. And you can see them playing heads up and cross from the Dorito insert and the snake side bunker. Cowbell. Oh, the cowbell over I've been, here I'm telling all my friends yep. about the cowbell. Yep. So they're a good shot of Yakimak holding down the tape on the snake side. He's backed up by Justin Cornell in the back center, which I'm not used to seeing, but Justin Cornell, a wily fellow, he can do a lot of different things. Zach taking a look inside. Oliver Lang checks himself as he makes a move up the field. Oh, big, uh, big field there for Justin Cornell into Dorito corner. But he did get shot by, um, it looks like it was Ryan Greenspan put a lane on him, but it bounced and he's clean. Yakimax just being picked off going into snake one. Yeah, Oliver Lang did a good job to get his gun up quickly as he made his move out to the Dorito side. Justin Cornell getting a great shot on the Polar Bear players. He fills out. I don't think he saw that. Good shooting by Justin Cornell. Uh, Oliver Lang hopefully can keep Justin contained in that spot because if they let Justin out and he gets into that snake, mm. I'm going to say game, set, point for Edmonton Impact against the Polar Bears. And did um, Cornell make it out into snake? Oh, one? and he makes it out. Oliver Lang switches his gun for just a split second. Oliver directing his player to switch out now to contain Justin Cornell. You can see the... The polar bear player there, closest to the snake side. He switched back now. Yeah, and Oliver screaming at him. <laughs> get it, yeah, out get to the, corner. the corner. It didn't make it out there. Oh, that's not a good play call. I'm sure Oliver's going to come off frustrated with that one. Oh, and Oliver gets shot in the head. Amazing shot by Justin Cornell. You see Oliver walking off there. That could be, that's Ryan Greenspan there in the back left corner, the yeah. side corner. He won't live long now with Cornell in snake, and he's hanging out too far. No, Cornell polishes off the Dorito 2 player and is now going to shoot Ryan. So, great play by Justin Cornell to pick one to make that fill out behind Zach as Zach got shot, shoot his mirror, and then get into the snake, work out Oliver Lang and two other Polar Bear players. Yeah, sorry, we're getting interference from the pits right now, so we will go over to the pits very shortly. Oh, here we go, so we'll go to the pits now. Oh, okay. So I'm still in the pits here, and I'm in the, um, the other pits now. And you see Ryan Greenspan not being happy, talking it over with Oliver, saying what went well and went wrong, and something completely went wrong there. So they said they'll deal with it. They know how to deal with it, and they will. Sneak in there. Yeah, there you go. So there you see the polar bears. Say Maurice trying to listen in. Here we can hear. You see the pit crew getting uh, Oliver Lang and company ready to go. Uh, there definitely was a little bit of miscommunication. Oliver Lang, seeing that Justin Cornell made them move out to the snake side, uh, felt like he didn't, you know, he, he didn't want that that job of containing him. So he told his back center or his snake insert player to, to switch out that way. And you saw the snake guy start to go out and then he came back in. And then when he finally went to go, by that point, Justin had already had his gun, his lane established. And, it, you know, there was no chance of that guy making it out to the corner. That would have been the move, um, you know, if, if you get out to that corner to match that guy in the snake, you can step out wide, shoot him, or just, you know, fill into the snake yourself. But uh, unfortunately for the polar bears, that didn't happen. So another good point by Edmonton Impact to go up 2-0 to zero against the polar bears in this final game uh, brought to you by Paintball Garage. So thank you, Paintball Garage, for sponsoring this final CPL game here at Leg 3, Basildon, Campaign Cup, UK, booyah. So. There's the stands. They're pretty much full. Even the VIP is full at the top there. So we've got polar bears on your screens, pushing snake side. Didn't make it out alive. Um, and yeah, uh, it looks like it's... Justin Cornell Justin taking Cornell. the walk from the back center. Another Polar Bears player and Edmonton Impact player dropping. So f two bodies from each team dropping really quickly on the break. Uh, you know, this finals game, man, you got to tighten it up.
Polar Bears losing bodies going out to the corners. Edmonton Impact losing a Dritos corner player and Justin Cornell out of the back center. There on your screen, you got Edmonton Impact, one player in the back center. You got a Dorito player that you can't really see because of the angles of the screen, but that's Zach Yakimak. Yeah, Yakimak is very um, confident and dominant right now, standing over his bunker. Yeah, he's, his gun in, rolling. he's in a great position, Shelly, to shoot back at Oliver Lang. Or, no, I'm sorry, I'm not sure if that's yeah, Oliver. Yeah, it's Tissenkoff. Tissenkoff over here on the snake side, who has now switched his, guns, his gun over to the Doritos. Ryan Greenspan making a great move up to Dorito, too. Gonna try and some, put some pressure on Yakimak as he fills out to the corner. You see him there, checking, asking for a check on his backpack. Yes, his backpack or battle pack. Battle pack. <laughs> <laughs> and he's clean. Ref gives him the old loop to loop. Say, so, hey, play on player. There's Ryan Greenspan. Now Ryan Greenspan and Zach Yakimak have somewhat of a blind shot on each other. You can't tell from that angle right there but it is a, a deadly shot if you're not paying attention. But, uh, and Oliver Lang is now pushed all the way from back center into Dorito 1. Uh, has no idea that his other player has just been shot. And In what? It, it's just like, it, I think it's just Ryan Greenspan and Oliver Lang on Dorito side for Polar Bears. So it looks like it's a two on two. Both corners for impact. Oh, what a shot by Zach to wrap around and shoot Oliver in his Dorito. I was going to say, a great shot by Rainey shooting low oh, no, he from the shot, corner. He shot Ryan Greenspan. Oh, so Ryan Oliver Greenspan. Lang -Lang. Oliver Ling Lang. Ling -Lang. <laughs> Oliver Lang still alive. And Oliver oh. Lang gets shot. Wow, great shooting there from uh, Yakimak. Yeah, that would say Yakimak, great, great job shooting cross to peel off those bodies. <laughs> On the Dorito side, Ryan Greenspan kind of freaking out walking back into the pit. You hear Dave Bain screaming at Ryan. Or I'm sorry, at, uh, <laughs> at, at Rainey and Yakimak. Rainey got that shot in on the snake player. He laid prone, laid on the ground, all the way on the ground, and shot low from the Dorito corner to shoot. To I don't even know that was a shot. I've never, I haven't seen that all tournament. That was ridiculous. That's a brilliant shot. I wish I had seen that when I field walked this weekend. Um, yeah, because uh, it, it's very hard when when a player hits the snake. It's actually hard to shoot them unless you're quite a tall player. Mm -hmm. um, it's almost like that blind loop over the top and hope you clip the pack. Um, do, do you agree, Nick? There's oh, not completely. many positions on the field where you can get the snake. So to find one like that in the Zorito corner. That was unbelievable. Yeah. I was watching and I was like, what is he shooting? Oh, he got him. Yeah. So got what we'll team. do now is we'll go to the pits with Maurice. And for now, we hear um, Ryan Greenspan talking to his coach, Kenny Kell. And they're telling that uh, this is a drill they haven't done, the iron drill, as they call it. And Ryan isn't happy. Uh, saying, come on, we've done this drill, we know how this works, and how come we lost this one and we actually shot one or two off the break? So Kevin confirmed that they shot one or two people off the break and then that they didn't capitalize on it. So let's hear it to them. And Oliver's just saying, you gotta believe it, we're giving it to them every game. Three points should be ours. So Oliver's saying this game should have been theirs. Three points should have been theirs. So back up to the tower, out from the pits. Thank you, Maurice. You also see Oliver Lang asking for translators to translate what he's saying as well. As there is a communication barrier there on the polar bears with the um, Americans and the Russians. Oh, I can hear Dave Baines um, um, coaching Edmonton Impact as they Dave Baines, what? <laughs> Caution, what, Dave? <laughs> <laughs> so Edmonton Impact on your screens at Startgate camera. You got Rainy Sanchez at. And oh, he, he started late, had to touch back. I don't um, know what that was. That was yeah. They two t two players then started too early. Rainey did touch back, but which delayed. Was them. there another horn that went off? No. Oh, there was this player error right there for, yeah. for Josh Ahmet and Rainey. Luckily, Rainey got back, but Josh unfortunately gets shot right away. Good shot by the Polar Bears player. I think it was Ryan Greenspan going out to the Dorito side that got that shot on Josh. But you have the four remaining Impact players: Justin Rabikoff, Rainey. Uh, Zach Yakimak, and I'm not sure. I think it's Justin Cornell in the back center. Good shot there of the Polar Bears. Four players on your screen. Two guys doubled up in the back center. One player in the Dorito insert. Dorito one. And now the snake insert. So, again, you know, Oliver Lang said the best. These games are ours, right? They've, they've been up on bodies. And, uh, you know, they just have to work together to close it out. Oh, Ed Edmonton Impact now filling out snake side. So yeah, with Justin Cornell and Yakimak here on your screens. Yeah, great move by Justin Cornell. I hopefully he can contain the Russians from trying to fill out, but I have complete faith that him and 
and Yakimak can do that as you see Yakimak switching back and forth, working with Justin. Justin telling him, hey, I need you to shoot this way, you shoot that way. There's Oliver Lang giving a good point to his Russian comrades saying, hey man, you know, they're out wide over there, you gotta look that way, we cannot afford to let them into the snake. So all, all guns uh, rolling right now, trying to lock down those lanes. It's five and four in Polar Bear's favor, but they are down three points. Yeah, and you know what? You'd say, great job by Edmonton Impact being down a body. You can see the, the composure and control in, in Justin Cornell there as he's telling, he's telling Zach who's on him and what he needs Zach to do to stop that or combat any move that Polar Bears might make. I like that shot there from Justin Rabakoff. He, he backed off from uh, Dorito 1, trying to see if he can clip uh, Oliver Lang and the pack, but couldn't see it. He's gone back into Dorito 1 now. And Ryan Greenspan did the same thing in Dorito corner for Polar Bears. Yeah, and if you know you get, you get another shot <clears throat> on Oliver Lang, you can see how tight he has to get into that bunker. I mean, he's, he's, he's bending that bunker to his will. He's making it move all around so he can play as tight as possible just to stay alive. There you have the only player that's wide, <coughs> excuse me, on the snake side for Polar Bears. Justin Rabikoff now making move into Dorito 2. Oliver Lang making move up the middle of the field to that tall Medusa Temple Command Center rocket ship, whatever you want to call it. Is there another name you guys? Is this Medusa? Uh, well, that's the name that the Millenniums call these, the, the bunker. Oh, okay. I mean, we, it. we call it Bergen. Be Bergen. So there's that's different Norwegian. names for everything. It's Norwegian, yes. I got it. <laughs> so Oliver Lang up at the Bergen. Trying to shut down Justin Rabikoff as he makes his way into the Drito 2. Oliver Lang now making his way into the M. Oh, I like that. Nice move. Just You've got to be careful in the M, though, because if as soon as he realizes that he's that part of the M, you can bounce shot him in there. Yeah, and Zach Yakimak going to see that. Gonna... Shoots Oliver in the leg. Yeah. Great counter move by Zach Yakimak to come up the middle and shoot Oliver Lang. Although I think Oliver Lang, oh no, that's another Polar Bear player. Two, and there might be a one for one coming on the last player, and there is a one for one. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. One for one. So As both players to the Polar well Bears walk Well thought out off. point there for Edmonton Impact as they make it now 4-0 as Polar Bears throw the towel with just under four minutes left remaining. Yeah, and you know what? I mean, Polar Bears had the advantage on the break. You know, J uh, Edmonton Impact, Josh Ahmet making a mental error, leaving early, or I don't know what he heard. But, uh... So what, what we see, let's, let's find out. Let's go to the pits now with Maurice. We're in the impact pits and their opponents. Let's listen to them. Hey, hey, put that together to figure that guy out. He's going to go black. Yeah? Listen, listen, listen. They're going to go Dorito 1 and, and the 1. They got it. In the corner, Dorito 1. Dorito 1. Right up to the they're command center. Go. Yep. He's going to go up the center. So you hear the voices of Dave Baines and Justin Rabikoff talking about... Lift on top, lift on top. They're going short, they're banking on us going short, they're going to catch us first. The polar bears going to the Dorito corner and the Dorito one on the break. So we'll definitely pay attention to that, see if the polar bears make that move. So that, that we heard from Dave Baines, they're trying to go short, they think we're going to go short and they'll catch us off guard. So he reacted on that. Up, back to the tower. Yeah, thank you, Maurice. So as we heard the players there and uh, Justin Radbikoff explaining what he wants to happen and what Polar Bears will be doing, he, he predicts that it will go to Dorito 1 and the 1, and the, what they mean by 1 is the Dorito corner. Yes, so a lot of teams, <coughs> uh, American teams, could use the bunker names 1 through 5. Yes. I don't know if there's a lot of teams over here maybe do some that. Some do, some don't. We do, some don't, though. So uh, it depends on which calls uh, teams prefer. Okay, so yeah, so that is definitely a unique thing if you can pick up on that lingo that's being dropped by teams, uh, especially over, say, for me in Europe, because one, the different languages throw me way off. <laughs> but um, uh, any team, team for team, like you know, it's always good to have an open mind and listen to other teams that have to have paintball calls because you might learn something and think, oh, that's pretty simple, or and just the way where people grow up, their cultures, their lifestyle. You know, they look at things differently. They have a different perspective on them, and you know, it could be simpler. And that's how you become a more well-rounded person and paintball player if you yes. learn to accept other people and grow. Of course. And what, a, and what a sport we live in yes. to be able to be friends with everyone all over the world. <laughs> Not love, everyone. We love paintball. Um, so. Will this be the last point? Will this be the last point? You know, I, I mean, Edmonton Impact has been down on the break almost every point. Right? They've been they've been short bodies and they've been able to battle back. They've held their composure, and so I'm gonna say this, I'm gonna think this, you know, this could be the very last point, uh, unless the
polar bears can do something, I don't want to say drastic, but just that if the time's against them, yeah. and they need to get key kills, which they've done, but then they need to counteract in, as a team and move down the field, not just have Oliver Lang go up the middle, or Ryan Greenspan run to the Drudo 2. So here we go, less than four minutes left remaining. This match is brought to you by Paintball Garage. So Polar Bears taking both corners, making it to each spot. Oh no, I'm mistaken. The Drito corner for the Polar Bears gets shot on the break. So he's taking the walk. So big, big, good uh, off the break shooting by Edmonton Impact to get that kill. Yeah, you can see Ryan Greenspan. Oh, as I said it, I cursed him. He was locking up Snakeside, just being shot in the face. So that allowed, that frees up Snakeside for Edmonton Impact. And when they realize that lane's gone, I think it's, uh, who who have we got in Polar Bear's side? He's got a snake corner to try and stop anyone pushing out at the moment, but that's it. Yeah, I mean, it's say that with the Polar Bear still being wide over here on the snake side, if that player can make his way in, he's got to put Justin Cornell in. If he can put Justin Cornell in and work his way into the snake, they do have a high percentage chance of pulling this game out uh, as Impact has not made any big moves on the Dorito side, which is something that they haven't done all tournament. Now, as I say that, you see, uh, I think that's Josh Ahmet yeah, making Josh. his way up to the Medusa. On yeah, the you can see in the center of, the of your screen there, the large uh, bar barricade in the middle with the straps. And Cornell has been shot and um, on his hopper and it and deemed to be out with a penalty. It's a penalty for Emerson Impact. They lose their, the whole snake side there. Yeah, so big gift given to just uh, given to uh, uh, the Polar Bears by Justin Cornell. I didn't see a hit on Justin. I'm sure he's going to be asking for that from the refs. As a Polar Bear player, Makes his way into the snake, another one behind him. He's looking for that kill on, uh, oh, and it comes from the back player of the Polar Bears to kill jo uh, Josh Ahmet. So only one player left alive, I believe, for impact in this rainy stands. He goes streaking up the Dorito side into Dorito 2. He's going to be in a rough position. Oh, and he kills the Polar Bear player running down the field. So it's at least a two-on-one, if not a two-on-two. -two. I can't, oh, Justin Rabikoff just gets shot, so it's a two-on-one. Randy Stanzik in the Drito 2. You can see the Russian player there on your screen trying to get a shot on him. He's yeah, going to make uh, a move towards the back center look to get to the buzzer. Yeah, Oliver Lang in back center. Oliver Lang's now coming down Dorito's side to find Rainey. And the buzzer is hit by the Polar Bears player. Oh, no. Oh, uh, so the ref's running over to head ref. And he's, he's saying no point. He's saying no point. He's doing, the, he's doing the, the hand drive. So, well, the polar bear player hit the buzzer and is clean. Now, what I wonder is when he hit the buzzer, did he do it before or after the penalty? We, I didn't, didn't, see, we the didn't see what happened over there on Dorito's side. Maybe Rainey spun. Maybe he they turned and he got a one for one. Well, it definitely looked like Rainey ran directly at Oliver Lang. Yes. And they were, Oliver Lang was on the tape. So I don't, I mean, maybe we can get a report in from Jabba or from Maurice. Here we come uh, from the head ref, Jabba. Last player, impact will start with four on the next point. So, one for one on Impact. Impact will start with four this next point. Wow, so hey, you know, there's the gift that the Polar Bears need. <laughs> Unfortunately for them, only a minute and 44 seconds left in this match. So they are going to have to power down this field and get some early kills. Wow, it's going to be fun. Uh, Let, let's see what Maurice can find out in the pits and what they're going to do next. Give it to us, Maurice. So I'm here in the pits, and uh, I just hear they're kind of, well, they don't shout that much anymore. They're kind of happy what they did. And actually, I don't think they know that they're going to start with four, but they don't have much time left. And that's something Oliver Lang just said. Uh, we don't have much time, so we have to move it. Uh, so that's the only thing I can tell you from here, as or that they didn't know that the other guys start with four yet, because I do know. But for now, I won't even tell them. So back to you up in the tower. Well, thanks for keeping that a secret, Maurice, and not telling anybody. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we see Oliver Lang and Ryan Greenspan trudging out onto the field. There's Ryan Greenspan right. on your screen. That's getting Shelly commentator cursed him, talking about him. He got smoked in the face by the back yeah, center. Sorry about that, Ryan. <laughs> He's leading the team out, and the timeout has been called by Edmonton Impact. So I think a good move by Impact. Call timeout, I'm sure. Uh, I, you know what, maybe not, because it definitely looked like the Polar Bears had to kind of rush out into the field. Um, they're definitely rotating the same five, six guys. Um, and with a minute and 44 seconds, I'd kind of want them a little gassed coming out into the field. You know, you can definitely hold off for a minute and 44 seconds with four players. And with the way the lanes are in this field and how the Polar Bears are going to have to just attack 
impact mm. because they've got to score three points in a minute and 44 seconds, which is definitely possible to do on this field. Um, I don't know that I'd want to give Polar Bears any extra time to kind of catch their breath or concentrate on their uh, their game plan. But I'm excited to see this point. Um, I thought this, I thought this game was going to be over with last point. Um, yeah, I, 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 did, I did too. But there was the penalty, wasn't there, on Snake's side between um, uh, Yakimak and Cornell. So no penalties now. And let's see what happens with only four players on the start gate for uh, Edmonton Impact. It looks like it's Justin Rabakoff. Uh, is it Rainy Stanchek, yep. and Yakimak and Cornell. So they'll play a defensive breakout here. They'll probably stop short and put out one out wide somewhere. What do you reckon, Nick? I, I do, and you know, they're smart, and they see the personnel on the field for the Polar Bears. And so Dave Baines is yelling those calls out, and you can see them on your screen right now. Let's see if he goes all the way. He goes to the corner. Oh, great he gets shooting. shot right away, so good heads-up call by Dave Baines, the coach, to have Justin Cornell shoot that way on the break. So made it 4-4 already. It's even Stevens. Oh, oh three Ol bodies. Oliver Lang's been shot. So there's only three remaining for Polar Bears. Two remaining. Two remaining as they make a great move to the 50 Dorito on the break, but get shot out really quickly after. So this is not looking good for the Polar Bears Polar as Bears. they lose their uh, fourth body. Yeah. It's only Ryan Greenspan remaining for Polar Bears. What a point for Edmonton Impact to start with four and to pull this one out of the bag. And Polar Bears have been playing very well. They just haven't been capitalizing on their breakouts. And yep. uh, Brian Greenspan finally gets shot there, holding it up against four Edmonton Impact players. And um, Edmonton Impact win the point, but they have to hit the start gate first. They don't have to. Yeah, they can let the time run out. It'd be funny if Zach turned around and shot everybody and said, ah, you're all dead. <laughs> and he hits the buzzer. Base. Base. So great play by Edmonton Impact to pull this one out. They are the champions of leg three of the Millennium Series here in Basilton, UK. So they came straight out of NXL to win that, to come over here and now to win the Millennium Series. Edmonton Impact have put it into another gear after starting off the um, season not as well as how they finished the year before. So Edmonton Impact get first on the podium here, CPL. Yep, and only four words for Edmonton Impact. Yeah, we did it, yeah! <laughs> there you have the Polar Bears in the pit. You know what, you know, they, they didn't play all that great this tournament, or not, sorry, not this tournament, this this last match, yes. but no reason to hang their heads. That You know what, they came out and they dominated. You know, they made their way through their bracket. They played very well this morning throughout this whole day to get to this point. So I'm proud to see them come out here. Uh, you know, Oliver Lang and Ryan do a great job of, and SK do a great job of working with that team, with their with their Russian uh, teammates to get them to play. And they're always positive, right? Yeah, they're emotional. Those guys want it more than anyone else. They've got the biggest hearts in the world when it comes to playing paintball, and they've won it all, still doing it. So, you know, I have confidence in the, that team. You know, we'll see them again, hopefully in the finals come Come Chantilly. Yes. Uh, great team. Polar Bears have definitely stepped up a level. I mean, Ryan Greenspan and Oliver Lang have already spoken about the communication issues on their team because of the language barrier. But wow, they've, they've ended up in the finals. And, um, um, and, and despite not getting a uh, good points against Edmonton Impact, they definitely brought it to them. Uh, let's see if we can go to the pits now with Maurice. So I'm here in the pits, and of course, in the pits, the winner's pits. <laughs> So, Dave, how happy are you? I'm here with my buddy, Laurent, so it's yeah, all good. Laurent. Laurent, so how was that final for you, Laurent, with you guys here, the winner and the organizer? I, congratulations, Laurent, always a class act, so we appreciate it. No, no, they, they really deserve, they play better than everybody this weekend. Everything works well, Houston hit, lost in the quarter, everything, everything. I've changed it to bad season now for, the, for Paris is, uh, whatever win the event will be champion, so this is good. So it's now race to three, not to four, because I think breakout spa are out of the race. But uh, I think it's good. It's good for the league. It's good for the team. And uh, it was really a great event with a lot of surprise. And so what was the tactics you had against them? Um, I mean, honestly, we kind of played like an audible style game where we make the calls in the 10 seconds. So we have set plays and then we just kind of went through them. So the guys adapted and they did it well. And they, I mean, they followed it to a T. So it was an easy game or an easy job as a coach for me. Okay, and they really reacted well, and of course, individually, they played very well, too, and, well, the other guys got a few penalties, which helped also. Absolutely. I mean, the Polar Bears are a great team. Actually, they played 
really well this this tournament. Um, so we were concerned about them um, coming in. Um, so I mean, I just think we executed really well, and you know they got a couple majors that kind of hurt them, and we got less, and that's the difference in the tournament, honestly. Yeah, it does. And Oliver, did do you try? Huh? Okay. Well, so for now, for now, uh, thank you a lot. Go and celebrate with you guys, and we'll be right back with you. So we'll be doing the draw for the next event in a few minutes with, uh, of course, uh, Laurent Hame. Oh, we got caught out there. Oh my gosh! <laughs> up on, up on the media there was tower. a bug in Charlie's here. I just want to get it. <laughs> Um, thank you, Maurice, uh, with the interview in the pits with uh, uh, Dave Baines and Laurent, who runs um, uh, the Millennium Series here. And um, uh, we don't turn off just yet because uh, very shortly there'll be the draw as to who will be playing who um, at Chantilly in the final leg at uh, Millennium Series um, in September. Um, but wow, what a final. A, a great final, as, as Laurent was saying, you know, the, definitely a, a big switch from what we've seen from the first two events where you have the same four teams in Puget and then again in Bitburg. Uh, the only little difference there was the rankings from Impact and uh, Breakout Spa, but the only consistent teams now making it to the final four, the Tauntauns and Edmonton Impact, so that's going to mix up the race for the series title. Uh, can't wait for the draw to see who plays who in Chantilly, and uh, stay tuned, and we'll be right back with the draw. Yep. Definitely. That game was brought to you by a mon uh, by Paintball Garage, as you can see from behind. So thank you very much. The sponsorships keep coming in, makes Paintball a better place and, uh, and promoting it worldwide. So thank you and stay tuned after these short commercials for the draw for the next round.
And we're back on, back on the CPL field with Mr. Lerohame. Lerohame, congratulations.